<laughs> Great. Okay. So we're muted and we're recording. So stepping into our practice, finding a comfortable way to stand. Feet can be wider than you would normally or closer together. Just move it around a little bit till you feel safe. And then settle into a stillness. Maybe a deep inhale and a slow, mindful exhale. Aware of the soles of your feet as they rest on the earth. Just noticing any sensation in the bottoms of your feet. Not without labeling it negative, positive, good, bad. Just resting here, rooting into the soles of your feet. Aware of the breath. And maybe aware of any sensation. Allowing the shoulders to slide up towards the ears, allowing them to hug to the center of the back and then slide down to the waist, bringing your attention to the space just below your collarbone, and the awareness of the breath as it fills that space, and what sensations are you aware of in the heart space. Maybe your eyes are softly closed. Maybe you find a gazing point ahead of you. Sometimes it helps to let go of the sense of sight to tap a little deeper into um, the other senses. Can you allow the inhales to move a little deeper by softening at the end of the exhale, letting go of all efforting so that you can allow the muscles between the ribs to expand for the lungs to fill completely, the belly softens. Gently hugging the breath out, maybe actively aware of the belly button, hugging back and up, up towards the heart as we further engage the diaphragm or the muscles that press or hug into the diaphragm. The diaphragm contracts on the inhale opposite of what you might think. And with the exhale, it's just softening and releasing. And it's the muscles in the thoracic body that hug the breath out. If we bring awareness to that. No efforting. Following the breath from the inhale the end of the exhale from beginning to end. Through the tip of the nose if possible. The breath that's always there that we take for granted. We've been brought to a deeper awareness in this time of COVID and now the fires in California of just how tenuous the breath can be and how vital. And maybe grateful for the gift of a complete breath. A 
the ability to breathe into that space just below the last rib in alignment with the belly button to allow a total expansion of the thoracic body for the lungs to fill completely and then exhaling, gently hugging the breath out. Filling the front and back of the heart space. And maybe noticing are the inhales the same length as the exhales. Making them the same, evening out the breath. Two more rounds of breath like this. Just noticing how you're being in the stillness of mountain pose, breathing into the heart space. Maybe the thoughts tug at you one after the other. Maybe you're able to take a couple of rounds of breath without a thought. We have compassion for this human nature of thought, even as we practice to let it go. And with your inhale, allowing the arms to float out, around, and up. And with your exhale, allowing the hands to float together to the heart center, the thumbs resting against the upper chest and setting your intention for your practice. Meeting your practice like the palms of the hands meet. Allowing the breath to guide your body without force or over effort. Placing that intention in an I am statement and repeating it softly to yourself a few times. and allowing the fingertips to extend towards the earth again. Rooting into the soles of the feet, the circumference of the heels. Noticing the legs become active, allowing the upper body to lengthen and lift. With your inhale, allow the arms to float out, around and up. With your exhale, hinge forward from the hip creases. Inhaling, lengthening there from tailbone to crown of the head, shoulder blades slide to the center of the back. Exhale, maybe straighten a little into the back of the knees because we're always exhaling with bent knees to soften. Inhaling there, exhale, root into the soles of the feet. Inhale, hinge all the way up and bring it, float it to the heart center. Inhaling, finding that length from fingertip to heels without efforting in the shoulders. Exhaling, folding forward, hinging forward from the hips, long front body. Keeping space between the belly button and the heart. Exhale, hinging a little closer to the earth, maybe with the body if you have space, without compressing that space between belly button and heart. Nice. Shoulder blades slide away from the ears. The breath moves freely. Exhaling, belly gathers. We root and become strong in our legs. Inhale, lengthening all the way up. Exhale, heart center. Inhaling, floating out, around, and up. Exhaling, swan dive down, soften the back of the neck. Inhaling there, exhaling, deeply bending the right knee, straightening through the left. Without locking the back of the left knee, there's a softness and awareness of the muscles down the back of the leg, the calf, maybe all the way up into the glutes. Shouldn't feel this in the lower back. Can you find an easeful place to have a bent right knee and a straight left? All the while the breath is moving freely. 
Inhale there, exhale, bending the left knee to straighten into the right. Noticing maybe this side's a little different. What do you notice without judgment? Finding softness and an easy breath. Still the right knee is, uh, has a gentle bend to it, even as you breathe into the back of the leg. Long front body, open heart space, shoulder blades slide to the center. Exhale, bend both knees. Inhale, hinge up with a flat back, straight back. Exhale, bring it to the heart center. Let the thumbs rest there. Connecting with the breath. As you root into the soles of the feet and lengthen through the crown of the head, softening the chin a little to the notch in the collarbone, allowing the hands to float to the hips and the weight to shift over the right leg. So you can step, walk, or slide that left foot back. A wide stance, a comfortable, easy stance, maybe walking that right foot over to the long side of the mat to feel a little safer. Always finding a variation of the pose that works for you. With your inhale, we lengthen. With your exhale, we root to the soles of the feet, active legs. Finding the balance of efforting and ease, exhaling, bending into the right knee, allowing the hips to settle straight between down between both legs. Still a long spine, an easy breath. Inhaling, arms up into cactus. Aware of the breath moving into the heart space. What else are you aware of as you scan your body with your breath? Is there a place of effort that you need to soften? What happens in the stillness in this early part of the practice? With your next exhale, allow the hands to float gently together. Inhale there. Exhale, the heart moves to the left, open twist. Inhale, heart comes to center, exhaling to the right. Is there a difference between the left side, center, and right side twist? What do you notice? Do the shoulders stay settled down and together? Are you able to move from the waist up, keeping a safe, secure foundation, just exploring this, not judging it or forcing it? What happens when you let go of the foundation? What happens when you're aware of the foundation? Are you still connected with the breath? The next time you inhale, find stillness and exhale, step that back foot forward, walk it out. And then settle into stillness in your Tadasana again. Take a couple of rounds of breath here. Aware of the foundation through the soles of the feet. Of the energy moving up through the body, through the crown of the head to find a long spine. Strong and gentle. Easy breath <clears throat> to guide you. With your next inhale, the arms float out, around, and up, safe in their shoulder sockets. With your exhale, hinge forward. Inhale, lengthening there. Exhale.
exhale, maybe coming a little deeper into the pose, and that can mean different things for everybody. Maybe that means the hinge at the hips becomes a little smaller. Maybe it means the legs become a little straighter. The heart stays open, the back body is engaged to keep you safe, not rounding long straight spine. With your exhale, we root into the feet. With your inhale, we come all the way up to stand. With your exhale, we float it to the heart center and allow the hands to float to the hips. With, uh, sorry, allowing the weight to shift into the left leg so you can step or walk the right foot back. <coughs> And then noticing what you notice as you bring your focus to the foundation. Maybe it needs to be wider and you're walking that left foot to the long side of the mat or the feet need to be further away from each other or closer together. And then we find that foundation and lengthen straight up from there, softening through the shoulders and exhaling, bending into the left knee to settle the hips. Reaching back through that right heel and down into that left foot. Finding the breath and inhaling the arms up into cactus. With your exhale, the palms float together. With your inhale, we lengthen into the thumbs. With your exhale, open twist to the right. Inhaling, heart floats to center. <clears throat> Exhaling, the heart reaches towards that left knee. So that we're pivoting at the center of the body, at the belly button, so that we always keep that strong rooted foundation the breath that guides us, soft shoulders, moving the heart space, not the head, the neck, trying to keep the hips right where they are without efforting in the lower back. So keeping that foundation, the stillness in the lower half of the body, moving through the upper half, Finding stillness if you need to, not waiting for me to suggest it. With your next exhale, step that front back foot forward, sorry. Inhale, allow the arms to float out around and up. Exhale, hinge forward from the hip creases. Inhale, finding length there. Exhale, maybe hinging a little deeper. Shoulder blades slide together. Let the hands come to the tops of the thighs, all the way up by the hip creases. Draw the shoulders up towards the ceiling. Lengthen the sternum away from the belly button without lifting the gaze. Nice, Sue, beautiful. Find the breath. Deep inhales, softening exhales, rooting into the soles of the feet. With your next inhale, float all the way out, up and around. Let the arms extend alongside the ears and then soften into a variation that works for you. Aware of the connection through the soles of the feet, of the lengthening through the back body, and of the arms resting in their sockets. Still extending through the fingertips. And as I give these cues, is there efforting or ease in this pose? Moving with awareness without an ounce of effort, extra ounce of effort. Softening that right arm alongside your body. Keeping weight in that left foot. Inhale, lengthen. 
exhale, float over to the right. The right arm naturally slides down the thigh. There's a deep opening through the left side body without contracting or compressing the right side. So keeping a lift through the ribs and an opening at the same time, can you find that balance? Soft arm in the shoulder socket, exhale there. Inhale all the way up, float that arm down. Roll through the shoulders, big circles. And softening them down the back. Inhaling the right arm alongside your ear. Maybe this side's a little different. Can you find a place where you can lengthen easefully with the breath? Keeping weight in the right foot, inhaling there, exhaling, floating over to the left, maybe finding stillness there. Keeping weight in that active right leg, open heart space, breathing into the right side body. Inhaling all the way up, exhaling, floating that arm down, Shake it out, let it go. Maybe walk the feet a little bit wider and take some hip circles there. Just rotating the hips over the femur bones and reverse those circles. Rocking side to side, whatever feels right for you. Just working into the hips. And then softening there and walking the feet back to hips distance. Allowing the weight to shift over that right leg again and stepping that left foot back, but not all the way back. So not quite a warrior one stance, going for that pyramid stance, hip opener with a little twist. So now you know where we're going, what happens? Do you go to the thoughts? Can you let it go and come back into your foundation and the breath? Rooting down and lengthening up. Secure in the foundation. Soft shoulders open across the heart space. Inhale, leading with the heart, lifting and lengthening and exhaling, hinging forward. The knees soften without being deeply bent. And maybe you feel this in the right side body. The back of the thigh, the hamstrings, in the hips, the glutes. If you feel it in the lower back, please bring your upper body a little higher, away from the earth. Still long. Soften the back of the neck and the jaw. Find the breath here. Maybe you inhale the arms into cactus to become more aware of those shoulder blades as they hug to the center of the back. The opening across the heart space, strong legs here, inhaling, lengthening through the crown of the head. Exhale, maybe you have space to hinge a little closer, parallel to the earth, not folding, just hinging. With your inhale, come up, inch or two or three. With your exhale, hinging forward, let your body and breath guide you. And the awareness moving in and out of the pose, of the muscles that are being challenged, of the muscles that you need to have engaged to support you. So the belly hugs in and up to support the lower back so the legs remain rooted to the earth and the breath guides you. The next time you exhale and hinge forward parallel to the earth, find stillness there. Let the left hand Float to the right thigh or anywhere that feels comfortable for you. The right hand comes to the lower back. Keeping the length from the belly button to the sternum to the heart space, drawing the right shoulder blade to the center of the back, the elbow to the ceiling. Inhaling there, exhaling, the heart floats to the right. Any amount. Maybe the gaze stays to the floor with a soft neck. Maybe you're able to bring the chin towards the right shoulder, but the breath is smooth and even. 
You're finding an easeful place to take this gentle twist. With your next exhale, the belly gathers. With your inhale, floating back parallel to the earth, root into the feet, and inhale all the way up to stand. Step that back foot forward, shake it out, walk it out. Land in your Tadasana, your mountain pose, finding stillness and connecting with the breath again. Starting with awareness through the soles of the feet. Secure in your foundation so that you can focus on the breath as it fills the front and back of the heart space. Just noticing the habits of the mind and the body, bringing awareness to the difference between being in stillness and when you're moving in and out of poses, everybody's different. Just noticing because the habits on our mat are usually the habits in our everyday life. Some of them suit us and some of, some of those habits we need to let go of. And only you know what that is. As we work to become more aware of the stuff in our physical bodies, we become more aware of our mental, emotional body and bring everything into balance, allowing the weight to shift over the left leg so we can step that right foot back, not all the way. Keeping straight legs, but softening the back of the knees. As we root into the earth and lengthen through the crown of the head, as we lead with a long front body, leading with the heart, exhaling, hinging forward from the hip creases, not the belly button. If you were to place your hand on your belly, there would be no creases. You'd have a long front body. And then notice maybe this side's a little different. You can't fold this forward or you don't fold this forward to honor any tightness in the back of the thighs, the glutes, the lower back. What do you notice? Even the calf? How are you being in the pose? Is there still weight in the right heel? Or do you still have the foundation of the right leg? Inhaling there, maybe the arms come up into cactus. Find a way to breathe easefully in the pose, soften the back of the neck and the jaw. Exhaling gently, the belly gathers, inhaling, lengthening, exhaling, maybe you're able to hinge a little deeper. Inhaling, floating up any amount that feels right for you, exhaling, Moving with the breath so that you know where your edge is, not forcing anything. Aware of the breath and the body and the connection. Aware of the foundation that allows you to move the upper body. Moving in and out of the pose. And then floating to stillness with that next exhale, moving it around, strong, firm foundation, allowing the right hand to float to the left thigh, top of the left thigh, soften through the shoulders, long heart, inhaling hard away from the belly button. The left hand floats to the hip with the lower back and the shoulder blade slides to the center of the back. The heart's still facing the earth. Inhale, lengthen there. Exhale, heart rotates to the left. Maybe you're still gazing to the floor. Aware of the twist coming from the waist up. And then maybe the chin comes towards the left shoulder. Is this sustainable? How's your breath? Have you lost the connection of the foundation? Just bring awareness back to the soles of the feet, inhaling there, exhaling, 
parallel to the earth and inhaling all the way up to stand and stepping that back foot forward. Shake it out again, let it go. Find Tadasana. Maybe one hand on the upper chest if that helps you to connect with the breath. Maybe arms are extended. Breathing into the front and back of the heart space. What do you notice? Without efforting, without judgment, just being right here with this inhale and this exhale, allowing the thoughts to float away. With your next inhale, extend through the fingertips. Exhale, connect with that foundation. Inhale, allow the arms to float out around and up and exhale, bow to the earth. Inhale there, exhale, bend the knees, reach the hip creases back. Maybe the hips settle a little closer to the earth. Weight comes into the heels, toes are light. Draw the shoulder blades to the center of the back. And with your inhale, maybe the heart lifts away from the thighs without straightening the knees. A gentle chair pose, yes, soften. Root into the feet, inhale, come all the way up to stand. Exhale, float it to the heart center. A couple more rounds like this, inhaling, we lengthen. Exhaling, we hinge forward with soft knees. Inhale, keeping that length through the front body. Exhaling, reaching the hip creases back, weight in the heels, maybe the hips lower to the earth. Strong legs, inhale, lifting just the heart. Keeping those bent knees, active legs, easy breath. Exhale, root into those feet and inhale. Lengthen all the way up, exhaling, heart center. Last time, or skipping it and inhaling, finding that length. Maybe you're resting in mountain pose. Exhale, hinging forward. Inhale, lengthening through the entire back body. Exhale, weight roots into the heels, reaching the hip creases back. Inhale, heart lifts away from thighs. Nice. Find the breath. Exhale, root down. Inhale, all the way up without locking the knees. Exhale, bring it to the heart center. Connect with the breath. Smooth it out if the breaths become ragged or uneven. Make the exhales a little longer than the inhales if necessary. Allow the breath to fill the front and back of the heart space. Soften the jaw. Stepping to face the long side of the mat and walking the feet nice and wide. That's kind of relative, right? Nice and wide. Does it feel good for you? Does it feel maybe like a little bit of a challenge, but like you can sustain this wide-legged pose? Inhaling the arms out, around, and up alongside the ears. Notice, have you lost the foundation through the soles of the feet, the active legs? It's out again, efforting in the back of the knees. So find a softening there. Maybe the arms need to float into cactus. Arms rest in the shoulder sockets. And as if you had a block between them, if they're extended long, high, 
make them active as if you were hugging that block or reaching the palms into the side of the block. No effort, so find a balance. Maybe that means you're letting this cue go. Inhale there, reaching into the pinky toe side of the feet. Exhale, hinging forward, softening the back of the knees. Did you collapse at the waist? Root down, inhale all the way up. Can you keep the integrity of the back body, the foundation through the feet and the easy breath? Inhaling there, exhaling, hinging forward. Inhaling, rooting down, lengthening up. Last time, exhaling, hinging forward, open heart space. Inhale, all the way up to stand. Float those arms down, roll through the shoulders. Allow the right foot to pivot on the heel so that it toes point to the top of the mat. Maybe you need to take a wider stance to prepare for warrior two. Aware of the soles of the feet and their connection to the earth. The heels, the pinky toe and big toe joints, all the toes resting on the earth, not ripping. Inhaling, maybe the arms float out in T. Exhaling, we bend into that right knee and settle the hips straight down between the legs so that we keep that long spine. Equal length on both sides of the body, soft shoulders, easing over the right hand. How are you being in the pose? Can you bring a little more awareness to the breath as it guides you? Where do you need to soften? What happens if I suggest awareness in the pinky toe side of the right, of the left foot, sorry. From the inner groin, the hip crease, down to that left foot. What happens if we bring awareness to the outside of the right thigh, drawing the knee a little to the room in back of you? What happens when we bring awareness to the breath? And with your exhale, floating that left hand to the back of the thigh, keeping awareness of the Foundation, inhaling the right arm comes alongside your ear, long spine, lengthening out of the hips so that you can exhale and open through that right side body without compressing the left. Can you find that balance? Can you bring the right ear a little closer to the right arm? so that we're not allowing the head to hang, maybe gazing to the elbow crease or the fingertips. What happens when you're in stillness in the fullest expression of the pose for you? Finding a variation that works for you, maybe the knee's not bent, maybe it's straight, maybe you're not floating back quite so far. Easeful breath. With your next inhale, floating back up into your warrior two. A few rounds of breath here, finding the fullest expression of the pose for you right now in this moment. Where can you move a little deeper? Where do you need to soften? Where of the deep opening from fingertip to fingertip? Exhale, float the arms down, straighten that right leg. Heel toe the feet together. Find mountain pose again. Reset, reconnect, let that side go. Maybe you anticipate the other side or have expectations as we move to the left. We find a way to be curious about the left side. 
or maybe come into it as a beginner. Keeping ourselves safe and allowing the breath to guide us. Allowing, allowing the feet to walk nice and wide. So let the edges of the feet are parallel with the edges of the mat. Finding the connection through the soles of the feet already, there's a lengthening. And we pivot the left foot towards the top of the mat, the toes pointing to the end of the mat, the short end. The hips parallel to the earth. Let go of the cues that don't suit you. How does it feel? You're moving around and then finding stillness, finding your foundation so that you can feel the ease of the breath in the front and back of the heart space, not letting the ribs pop forward, drawing them back and lifting straight up. So you have a natural curve in the lower back without efforting. Inhaling, maybe reaching through the fingertips, collarbone height, so that there's no tension in the shoulders. With your exhale, the hips settle as you bend into that left knee. Use the breath to bring awareness to the foundation. What does that mean for you? The soles of the feet that anchor you, root you to the earth. So you can find the lightness of breath in the upper body. Maybe gazing over the fingertips on the left hand. Warrior. What does that bring to mind? Can we find a gentle warrior, an easeful warrior, comfortable in your own body with your breath, rooted to the pinky toe side of the right foot? drawing the left knee a little to the room in back of you to engage the foundation deeper, to stabilize you from the hips down so you can lengthen and move through the upper body. So that with your exhale, you can float that right hand down. And with your inhale, you can extend through the left, softening the arms and the shoulder sockets, finding the foundation again, inhale, lengthening, Exhale, as you root into that left foot, it allows you to flow to the right. And then the breath moves into the left side body. And you adjust and find a variation that works for you so that you're not efforting into that shoulder or neck, so that maybe the left ear floats a little closer to the left arm, so that maybe you're gazing to the elbow crease or the fingertips or maybe you're coming back to that first variation. Or maybe you're straightening that left knee without locking it. And still the breath is able to move into that long, open left side body without compressing and collapsing in the right side. Take what you need, let go of the rest. And these strengthening poses, holding and breathing here Inhaling, floating back up, exhaling, releasing the hands, and heel, toe, step the feet back together. Finding a gazing point and settling into Tadasana, maybe closing the eyes to connect with the breath in the body a little deeper. As we move from the outer physical body deeper into the energy body. The energy that's moving, the oxygen, the life, pulsing through your body. Evening out the breath if it's become ragged or uneven. Softening through the shoulders and the jaw. Breathing into an open heart space, rooted to the earth and lengthening to the sky. 
the vast sky above us, holding a vast possibility of life. You never know what's coming along next. Open to whatever it is, finding the grace in the body, in the mind, in the spirit to move through life without judgment or expectation. And it starts on our mats with ourselves. As we have compassion for ourselves, we bring it to everyone else. To have a, an appreciation for the breath, the simpleness of breath, and this body that we've been given. Softly blinking open the eyes if you've closed them and inhaling, walking mindfully to the top of your mat. Finding that foundation again so we can safely extend and lengthen as we inhale and as we exhale, we can take that hinge forward again. Exhaling there, sliding the hands to the tops of the thighs if they're not there already. Sliding shoulders to the ceiling to have a deeper opening, beautiful connecting through the soles of the feet. With your exhale, the tailbone tucks towards the heels. We round the spine to the ceiling without compressing the front body. So we're not efforting to round the spine. We're just allowing. Maybe the top of the head drops to the earth if that feels good for you. With your next inhale, the tailbone lifts, the belly softens towards the thighs naturally. The heart extends forward and maybe even the gaze lifts. And then you're moving from cat and cow with the breath guiding you, taking the full length of the exhale to round the spine to the ceiling, allowing the opening between the vertebra without compressing the front. And with your inhale, allowing a deep opening of the front body engaging the back body without compressing the lower back. Always finding that balance. Finding the opening, allowing a lengthening and a softening of the muscles. Regaining that supple flow. in a way that feels organic for you and your body right now today. It might be different tomorrow, maybe it was different last week. But we don't judge it, we honor it and have compassion. And with your next exhale, find stillness and a long spine. Inhale there, exhale, deeply bend the knees, let one hand and then the other come down to the earth and step it all the way down. Take the time to pad your knees. Maybe the big toes touch and the knees walk by wide. Maybe this is your first child pose of the day as you allow the hips to settle in the direction of the heels. Pause there. Inhale, lengthen the heart away from the belly. Exhale, bow to the earth. Allow the third eye to make contact with something without compressing the front body. So maybe you need a pillow or stacked hands. Your body, your practice, your child pose probably looks very different than everyone else's. Soften there with the exhales. Let go of any efforting. Maybe that means you're softening your eyes or your jaw. Maybe the back body and it gets a little longer and the breath moves just a little deeper. And the muscles between the ribs soften just a little more. The shoulders relax and release. Where do your thoughts go in the stillness? Can you gently draw them back to the breath? And the awareness of the breathing in and the breathing out. In this restorative pose, child pose. 
And if it doesn't feel restorative for you right now, can you find a variation that does? With your next exhale, the belly gathers, the head lifts, the arms walk long, extended, but still in the shoulder sockets. The hips stay right where they are if possible. And we walk both hands over to the right, but keep the hips right where they are for a long opening through the left side body. Arms are parallel, head between the arms, not over efforting with that left side. Maybe with your exhale, you're able to gently draw that left hip crease back and down towards your heel. A little deeper opening, maybe not today. No judgment, no expectation. With your inhale, walking it back to center, exhaling over to the right, keeping that right hip softened down to the heel, lengthening back the right arm in the shoulder socket and then finding the breath, filling the right side body. Allowing for a softening and a lengthening at the same time. How do we find that balance? Always growing our practice by bringing more awareness to the body breath connection, letting go of the efforting, doesn't mean the poses get harder, just means our awareness gets, goes deeper. So we can find what works for us in this breath, in this moment. Inhaling, walking back to center, exhaling there and coming up to sit onto the feet so that we can allow the hips to come to one side and we can extend the legs out in front of us and shake it out a little bit, roll through the ankles, flex and point the feet, the knees are bent, shoulders up, back and down, always finding integrity through the back body, not compromising the breath. And then we bend the feet, walk the hands, bend the knees rather, walk the feet back, walk the hands back, finding that integrity again, in a long spine, an open front body, Feet are wide, coming up onto the heels so that we can float into windshield wiper. Upper body relatively still, gently twisting from the waist down. Hips lift along with that internal rotation. Moving slowly with the breath, allowing the breath to guide you. Noticing the difference between one side and the other without judging it and coming to stillness here. Walking the feet back to hips distance and finding a long spine and aware of the sitting bones connected to the earth and inhale lengthening from there. You're at the top of your mat, so walking yourself forward. If you weren't there already, shoulders up, back and down, hands floating back of the knees and back of the thighs and open up onto the top of the sacrum challenging the core muscles to keep an extended spine and open heart space and easy breath. The soft back of the neck, aware of the heart lifting up to where the wall meets the ceiling. With your exhale, maybe you're carving out the belly to slowly roll one vertebra at a time to the earth, coming to the elbows, or rolling over to the side and coming to rest on your back. Taking stock here, finding the breath. And maybe one leg and then the other extends straight out onto the floor. Releasing, softening into the support of the earth beneath you. The security. Finding the breath. 
Just noticing where do you feel the inhales settle? Can you allow the breath to move into the back body so that when you inhale, the ribs come a little closer to the earth, the body rests a little closer, deeper. And with the exhale, you're aware of the gently hugging away, gentle hugging away of the body. Breathing into the side ribs so that the front and back of the heart space fills with breath. With each exhale comes a deeper softening. With your next inhale, the arms maybe extend up overhead and then you find an easeful way to have extended arms. Maybe the elbows bend, <clears throat> the shoulders soften. You're aware of a lengthening through the back body, a long spine with its natural curves in the back of the neck and the lower back. Maybe you're able to extend into the right heel and the left heel and flex the feet. Find an even deeper lengthening through the entire back body but the breath stays smooth. The knees don't, aren't locked, they still won't bend to them. And then we reach a little deeper into the right heel and the right fingertips, lengthening, and a little deeper into the left heel and the left fingertips. And then move gently side to side, from one side to the other with the breath. your organic way that suits your body. And then with your next exhale, finding stillness and floating the arms back down to either side of the body. Inhaling there and exhaling one knee and then the other draws in for a hug and find stillness first. Just scanning the back body with the breath and noticing where you're gripping more holding tension, soften through the shoulders as they rest on the earth, soften through the hips. Maybe with your next exhale, the belly gathers and the thighs have some space to come a little closer to the belly, maybe not. So not forcing. Maybe you're able to exhale and rock side to side, inhaling back up to center, exhaling to the other side. Moving slowly, aware of the back body and this little massage that you're giving to the hips and maybe even the outer glutes. Do you notice, is one side a little different than the other? What have your activities been in the past few days? Can you feel it in your body? Maybe, maybe not, just noticing. And then coming to stillness with your next inhale and making some circles through the hips. So with your palms or your hands on your knees, maybe you exhale the knees towards the belly, inhale them out to either side, bring them away from you together and towards the belly. Again, making opposite circles or not, what feels right for you. And then reversing those circles, challenging the mind and the body because we have habits and we always move in the same way from the start. And then allowing both feet to float to the earth with bent knees and walking the heels a little closer to the sitting bones, tucking one shoulder and then the other underneath the heart space, sliding them down away from the ears towards the waist. So you have a foundation through the soles of the feet again, through the hips right now, and the shoulder blades, the back of the head, the chin softens towards the notch and the collarbone. 
long spine. With your exhale, be rooting to the shoulders and the soles of the feet. And with your inhale, the hips lift off the earth. Exhale, lower down. Any amount, this is your body and your practice. Where are you going right now with this breath? Inhaling, lifting, exhaling, slowly one vertebra at a time. Comes back to the earth without forcing the lower curve out of the back. If that doesn't feel right for you, we can work into that later. Maybe you'd like to pause and hold your bridge pose, tucking one shoulder and then the other a little closer, rooting into the feet and the shoulders so that you can inhale, lift the hips a little higher, softening through the jaw. The heart lifts towards the chin. Not the chin to the heart. Inner thighs are hugging together without touching. Feet rooting to the earth, opening the hips towards the ceiling. The front body gets long. The heart is open. With your next exhale, slowly rolling down one vertebra at a time, allowing the hips to float back down to the earth. Extending one leg and then the other. Finding the breath. And using it to scan the body. Softening with the exhale. Deep inhale fills the front and back of the heart. Exhale, one knee and then the other draws in for a hug, rocking from side to side. Letting go of that back bend if you took it. And then allowing the right foot to float to the earth and inhaling that left leg straight up to the ceiling. Is there equal weight in both hips? Can you tell? Is the sacrum rooted to the earth? As you root down, can you lengthen into that heel? Making some circles through the ankle, one direction, and then the other. And then finding stillness there and fanning the toes out and curling them in. And extending into the toe joints, fanning the toes away from each other, long leg reaching to the ceiling. And then exhaling, hugging the belly to the earth for the foundation of the hips resting, circling the leg in the hip socket. Everything else is still. Big, well, basketball size circles. So it's slow and controlled with the breath. Aware of the knee facing you, of the toes fanning away from each other. And then reversing those circles. Strong core, bottom ribs hugging to the earth. It's those core muscles that keep you stable. Finding stillness there and flexing that foot again, reaching into the heel, rotating the toes out to the side and crossing that ankle over the thigh. Soften there, release into this pose allowing that left knee to float away from you or whatever bent knee you have, not really sure. Maybe walking the heel that's on the floor a little closer to the hip crease. Maybe it's in your practice to take the bind so you exhale and lift that foot and find the hands or fingers interlacing in back of the thigh. Maybe not, that variation doesn't work for you. Maybe you're keeping that left foot flexed and you're exhaling, allowing it to float in the direction of the floor with the knee working away from you and inhaling up for a twist and a deeper opening into that left hip and lower back. How does that feel? Maybe that variation doesn't work for you. Maybe you're resting or coming to stillness with that left foot on the floor, knee to ceiling, right foot, right knee softened. 
So maybe going someplace you haven't gone or exploring a different way of coming into the pose. With your exhale, the belly gathers. With your inhale, coming up to rest in neutral. Extending that left leg straight up one more time. And then exhaling it back down to the earth to allow the right leg to come to meet it. A couple of rounds of breath there, let it go. Coming to the other side, we know where we're going. Let go of any judgment or expectation. Exhaling the left foot to the floor with a bent knee. Inhaling the right leg extends straight up. And we make some circles through the ankle, equal weight of both hip, long sides of the body. Soft shoulders, reverse the circles, easeful breath guiding you. <clears throat> Flex and point, fan the toes out, curl them in. And then find stillness as you reach into the toe joints, fanning the toes out, finding an easeful way to be in this pose. Exhaling, the belly hugs in and up and we make some basketball sized circles, keeping the knee facing you. That leg is a little bit internally rotating in the hip socket, if you can connect with that. Maybe reversing the circles. Keeping the body relatively still, isolating the movement to slow, mindful, rotating the leg. Nice. Finding stillness there. Exhaling into a flexed foot, reaching out of that hip, rotating the toes to the right, and crossing the ankle over the thigh. Softening that right knee away from you if the right knee is bent. <clears throat> Finding space to maybe walk that heel a little closer to the sitting bone to move deeper, maybe staying right here. Not rocking the weight over to the right. With your exhale, maybe you find the left foot lifting and the bind, if that is available to you to come a little deeper or not. Maybe you soften out of that. Maybe you exhale that right sole of the foot towards the earth with the knee extending away from you towards the ceiling, inhaling up to center, maybe coming in and out of this. Maybe you rest in that twist, softening, releasing into it. Maybe not. Maybe you're exploring something different and finding it doesn't work for you today. And that is a good thing to know. What works for us? What doesn't? How do we challenge ourselves but not go too far? Pushing maybe past our comfort zone to explore something, but knowing when to stop. With your next inhale, the knees come back up if you brought them over. That right leg extends one more time and we exhale and float it safely back down to rest on the earth, allowing the left leg to come to meet it. So opening there, deep inhales and exhales. As you scan your body with your breath, Starting to think about what pose do you need to take that would complete your practice. Maybe you'd like to take an inversion, maybe a supporting inversion. So you're finding a bridge pose again and using a block to support your hips, but you're moving slowly, mindfully with the breath, aware of each and every step to get into that pose. Maybe you're resting in Shavasana or some other pose that would complete your practice. We'll take a final spinal twist after this. <clears throat> Maybe you'd like to turn over and come into downward facing dog. Maybe something else. I don't know. Maybe you need more of a hip opener. 
Maybe it's your lower back and you're taking pelvic tilts with knees bent and feet on the floor one more time. Your body, what do you need? You know where you hold your attention. Maybe you're coming up to sit or kneel and working on the shoulders. Or you can lie on your back and draw one arm across and then the other or take eagle arms to have a deep opening in the back if you've worked those muscles. So many options. What does your body need? Every day, all day we make choices. We want them to be aware, mindful choices. So we keep ourselves safe and supported. And we aim our boundaries. Physical boundaries, our mental, emotional boundaries. Knowing when to challenge, when to find a different variation. Knowing what brings us into balance with the world. Finding gratitude and joy, backing out of or coming out of the inversion if you've taken an inversion. Taking a couple of rounds of breath with a neutral spine and then exhaling the knees in for another hug. Getting movement if that feels right. And then releasing the arms to either side of the hips with the knees over the hips as if you were sitting in an invisible chair and pausing there. Soften through the shoulders, breathe into the heart space, aware of the core muscles that enable the legs to float over the hips. Keeping the shoulders resting on the earth allowing one knee and then the other to float over to the side so that the feet meet the earth. Maybe the knees or the bottom knee rests on the earth. Maybe you use a blanket or a prop between the knees or under the bottom knee, finding a way for you to come into a spinal twist that is safe and supported and then allows the breath to move into the side body, the side opposite the knees. Maybe the arms extend out in T or cactus. So you find an even, even deeper space across the collarbone for the breath to fill. Aware of the breath, of the energy that it brings to you. Letting go of all control. Resting in the rhythm of your breath. Breath that's always there to guide us throughout the day, pausing to become aware of the breath so we can use it to soften and be right here in this moment to let go of the efforting so that as you breathe into the back body, it softens, finds length, and maybe settles a little closer to the earth. That, right, that shoulder becomes a little closer. Maybe gazing to the fingertips opposite the knees finding a variation of twist that works for you. With your next inhale, gazing up to the ceiling, exhaling the knees back up to center and floating over to the opposite side, one knee and then the other. <clears throat> Maybe the side's different. It needs a different kind of propping or not. Arms extended or not, allowing the breath to move into the heart space. And as you settle into a long spine and soft muscles, you're able to move just a little deeper, maybe only perceptible to you. 
And your breath moves just a little freer. You become more aware of the support beneath you and the space surrounding you. More aware of the efforting in the body so you can release it. More aware of the stories that race so you can let them go. Bringing the body, the mind, and the spirit back into balance with the breath. With your inhale, gazing up to the ceiling. With your exhale, the knees come back up, taking any final movement to complete your practice. And then settling into Shavasana. Supporting where you need to, blankets, pillows. Legs extended, knees bent. Maybe the feet walk a little wide and the knees fall together. Maybe you start in one pose and then find a different variation would work for you. Always aware of the breath that brings awareness to your body. And allows you to settle. To release into the support of the earth beneath you. To choose stillness. Following the rhythm of your natural breath from beginning to end. Allowing the breath to soften in the body, softening the space between the eyes, allowing the eyes to settle into the back of the head. The forehead melts, the jaw releases, the tongue softens, the lips gently meet, and all the muscles in the face soften or melt towards the earth. Allowing the entire body to become heavy. Say if you were resting on the beach, the warm sand coming to fill your curves and support you even deeper. Backs of the knees, back of the neck, lower back, under the arms. Allowing the body to let go into that support. One breath following the next with just a gentle pause between the breaths. This is our anchor, allowing us to let go of the thoughts and come back here to the breath in the body. Just for now, taking this moment to bring ourselves into a state of peace. Nowhere to go, nothing to do, just one breath following the next. Taking care of ourselves, having compassion for the human state of rushing, thinking, and letting that go just for now, for these few minutes. Breathing in and breathing out. Stillness of the body. Stillness of the mind. Stillness of the space surrounding you. In that stillness, there are sounds, and we acknowledge them, maybe even delighting in them, and we let them go. So that we don't miss the next moment and the next sound. Without attaching, just observing, 
one moment and then the next. Resting in the stillness. Allowing all that life can bring us to come to us. Pause in. Aware of the breath. And I'll be here to guide you out. Slowly becoming aware of the earth beneath you. Becoming aware of the space surrounding you. As you gently deepen your inhales and exhales. Slowly bringing your body back from stillness with small gentle movements. And with your inhale, maybe extending through the fingertips. And with your exhale, floating the arms to a comfortable position as you gently bend the knees and step one foot and then the other onto the earth. Transitioning here, pausing here. Feeling more awake and alert with every inhale. And maybe noticing what your practice has given to you today. Maybe that thing that was heavy in your heart or your shoulders or tugging at your mind got a little lighter or went away. And we can move forward into our lives. Using your arm as a pillow, rolling over onto one side or the other. Aware of the breath as you guide it to fill the front and back of the heart space. Keeping the eyes softly closed if that suits you, press into the earth and inhale, walk yourself up into a comfortable, easy seated position, whatever that is for you. And with your inhale, extend, reach through the fingertips. One more time, exhaling, floating the palms together. 
to rest at the heart center. And bringing to mind that intention you started your practice with. Maybe you're keeping it. Maybe you're changing it. Repeat it softly to yourself one more time. Meeting our lives the way our hands meet. Gently with awareness. We lift our hearts and we bow our heads to honor that light that shines in all of us, that unites us. May our practice be continuous. May our hearts be steady. May our efforts be of benefit to all beings. May all beings be safe. May they be healthy. May they be happy. May they find their freedom. May they know peace. And may all beings walk through the world with ease. Namaste. Thank you for sharing your practice with me. Good to have you all. Thank you for giving my life purpose.